baby. Welcome back to the End Game Podcast. This is your line right now, big homie. I'm Coach Lynch Ooh. Hunt, and this is who? Uh, I'm Rob Brown. My man, Rob Brown. As Happy you know, back, one third of the Three Kings is not yes. here right now, but guess yes. what? We gonna be chiming in and bringing him in wherever he can fit in. You know how Absolutely. my motto is, get in where you fit in, baby. Absolutely, and we're gonna be bringing other people on as well, but uh, I'm just, I'm glad to be back, man. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be back because oh, man, I'm ecstatic. everybody and their brother was, you know, like hitting us up saying, yo, when y'all coming back and, you know, we ain't really leave, but um, I guess for, from the public, you know, point of view, we're back. And um, listen, we, we always ask you to pay one thing, right? Number one, pay attention. But then also you can help us out by subscribing, liking, pushing the buttons, wherever you listen to podcasts, go to that spot to listen to those podcasts, man. So thank you, man. How you been doing, bro? Hey, man, you already know it's a great day to do great <laughs> things with great people. I'm doing hella great, and I, I know, know you man. are too. Yo, great. first we got to state the obvious. What's the obvious? My man, you looking a lot slimmer than you was the first go around. Uh, so uh, let's uh, talk about how you lost 35 pounds in 30 days, yeah, big dog. Th- that that, that sounds impossible. Hey, you flip that the switch. Like, that sounds like um, some kind of uh, uh, surgery yeah, 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 or yeah. some kind of shot, <laughs> right? Boom. Was, yeah, was, you got that motherfucker. Was, yeah, I, just, was, we, there, I shot you. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, was, there was no surgery, uh, I promise you, and there was no shot. It mm-hmm. was just straight discipline and then focus. And like I said the other day, man, I, I believe on anything this time around, I talk myself into it. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, yeah. I say certain things to myself every single day, um, a few times a day. Yeah. Um, but I think you should talk about that. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, and, and you talk about. We, we talk about affirmations a lot. We talk time. about yeah, how, you know, the also. power of the subconscious mind yeah. and, you know, how like literally those things you can you can manifest things into your life. And literally you wake up every day yeah. and you have this whole script that you yeah. just sit there in front of the mirror and you tell yourself. Yeah. And it's funny because sometimes when, you know, I'm going through my rants and I'm telling people that this is what we do and all this stuff, like people just be looking at me like it's some dope stuff and then right. they never go do it. Yeah. But you literally like yeah. took a page out of this book and said, tell them, tell them what you tell them what you said. So, I thought it was super Not only do I say it in the mornings, but I fall asleep saying it. Absolutely, too, absolutely. Right? So uh, I, I just simply say I'm rich, I'm blessed, I'm walking in the fullness of God, I'm debt free, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy. In the days of making, barely making it in any area of my life, those days are over. I'm 6'3", I weigh 250, 50 pounds, I'm 17% body fat. I say that to myself every single day. Every so single day. What I want the people to understand is you are not currently, and I don't mean to throw off your subconscious no, talk no, or nothing no. like that, but currently you're not 250 pounds. No, you're not. speaking as if it's already done yeah, it's in that things. tense. Absolutely. Right, so these people need to understand the way you actually say affirmations and say this to yourself, that the subconscious mind does not know the difference from right. you actually being that and not being that. And if you speak it as if, then it shall bring the things to you that are attracted to that, right? Yeah, that I believe the same I, frequency I, I, as that. You gotta believe that too, but yeah, I absolutely. believe that wholeheartedly. And it's just, a, and, and so when I, when I say that, I believe, also that everything my actions my mindset the universe everything has to line up absolutely to give me everything that i say after i am i believe that right and so um yeah man it's and it's that's that's been a huge part like i said i'm talking myself into it and so i believe you can talk yourself and manifest yourself into anything that you want to um but you have to be willing to to do that in addition to the you know the discipline so, you know, we, we talk about the Pareto principle, right? Absolutely, yes. Um, it, it simply says, you know, 20% or whatever is going to give you 80% of the results. Mm-hmm. So there are probably, I don't know, a few thousand different exercises that you can do, right? Mm-hmm. There are probably a few dozen different diets that you can do. Right, right, but right. But you just simply need the diet and the exercise regimen that's going to help you get to where you want to be. And it's just a matter of doing that thing over and over and over and over and over again. Right. I, uh, I wore a shirt this morning at the workout that uh, anointed couture blessed me with. Yeah, and yeah. it simply said that success, success is boring. boring. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, so a couple yeah. people, a couple people wanted to debate me on that fact that yeah. success is boring. Was Jerome one of them? Nah. No, oh, okay. Jerome, all right. Good. Because Jerome. Uh, Jerome uh, yeah, okay. He, all right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he will debate he you. Will, he will. He yeah, will. In a New York minute. Right. I can say my, I got a headache. And he was like, you sure you got a headache? <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, I got a headache. But, um, Sound like you. 
But uh, nah, stop or it. Or the podcast. Stop it, stop it. But um, but a couple people was like, nah, not yeah. really. I'm like, yeah, success is boring. Meaning, it's you you figure out whatever it is that works, and you do that thing over and over and over and over and over again. And then one guy was like, yeah, you do that over and over again. You try something else, and then it don't work. And I'm like, why would you try something else if you're having success <laughs> right. with the thing that you're doing over, over, and over, and over again? So, um, yeah, it was, uh, that's, that's what it's about, man. It's just doing the same thing. And it's like getting up every morning, mm -hmm. doing a 45-minute bike ride every single day. Every single day. Regardless of how I feel. Yep. You know my motto. I say successful people do the same thing, the same time, the same way every day because they know it produces results. Absolutely. And I, I literally, like, if you don't have a system in place like that or a routine in place like that or rituals in place like that, right. man, and, and they know it produces results. Right. Like, that's the key. Some people are doing the same thing, the same time, the same way every day, and they're not getting the results that they want. And not only that, man, so um, I went home uh, this past weekend. We had this dope um, class reunion. Uh, shout out Tammy. How was that? Yeah, how was that? It was that? dope, man. Shout out Tammy. Um, shout, shout out Twala. And shout out Kim. It's, it's three ladies that went to the three main high schools mm -hmm. in our city. They put it they all together. came together, and, and I didn't realize this. This year was the 19th year mm -hmm. that they came together and they did a decade-long class reunion. Wow. So classes from 80 to 89 all came together, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, um, I was my sister. She came over to visit, and... Um, I was telling her about what I was doing because I told her about the, you know, 35 pounds and, and 30 yeah. days. And she was like, so I told her, I told her, yeah, do this, do this, do this. And so she was like, well, can I do this instead of this? Oh, I said, man. why? Why Why would you even, why would you ask me what to do and then ask me to substitute something? Man, I just gave the, you the blueprint. I just gave you the formula. I hate that shit <laughs> with a passion, man. And so, yeah, but it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's different. So why would I even attempt that if I'm telling you what to do specifically? I want to keep it real with you for a second. I think yeah. during that time, I actually gave a whole spill and I was saying that, um, have you ever modified something so much that it don't work no more? And you try to blame it on the thing and you say, I'm doing everything right. Yeah. And then in reflection, you start to look back and see that you modified it so, so much. much that it's not even the same thing anymore. Nah, nah. And you don't even realize it too. Like I, I don't know if you, you remember that morning. It wasn't too long ago. Uh, we had to do. Um, we had to do that. Was it the? Oh, it was the. Um, those burpees. The. Um, oh, not the um, Navy Seal joint. Yeah, the Navy. The Navy, Navy Seal. Seal. I got video of you. I, I got the, video of you today. I got that whole way. workout. The, the Navy Seal joints and no, everything. Not the, not the I, crutch part. Huh? I remember when I first started, I was like, Man, "Oh, I put your ass on the floor." I was like, ain't like, no way I can. Ain't no way I'm gonna do be able to do that on the floor. And so I started doing it. I, I, I used a bench. And so I, I immediately went to, I'm going to modify this thing. That's yeah, what I immediately yeah. went to because I can't do it. I, I already you know, said I can't do it. So I went to the modification, which was the, which you called it, the crutch. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I couldn't do it on there because I, I just couldn't get the rhythm because right. I needed, to be, on you the needed floor. to be on the floor. And you were like, man, if you don't get off, get on the floor. And then when I got on the floor, I could do you it. You could do it. But. Out the gate, it was, nah, I can't I need, do that. I need to modify I need to crush. The same thing the your sister was talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and guess what I said? I said, that crutch is holding you fucking back. Yep. Get the fuck off that bench, yep. and we're going to do this shit right. And then yep. you just start busting the joints out. I'm going to... In post production, we get sending that video <laughs> to the joint. Was. We got to drop that in there. Yeah, somehow. they were tough. Yeah, I think I got two and a half. Hey, that's but, all right, but I got them. You did them though. Yeah, two and a half yeah. more than when you had that crutch. <laughs> two and a half more than me. Uh, <laughs> two and a half more than me. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm allergic to a wall fitness, man. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> hey, that's all right, though. You know what come with it, man. The results come with it, man. I tell you. But this ain't no plug for me in the workout or none of that type of stuff, nah, man. I just wanted to give you kudos and big ups. And, you know, just mad respect for, you know, actually taking your discipline to the next level for those days because we had some tough days and we literally, I kept changing your, your nutrition plan the whole entire time and you just was, you know, open arms. Like, what's next, what's next yeah, big what's dog? Next? Just tell me what's, what's, what I got to do. I'm yeah. following the blueprint and I'm so, like, all right. You told yeah, me. So well, I, let me ask you that real quick. And I know this ain't no interview for working out none of that no, stuff, no, but no, what's up? what 
made you um because you was doing some stuff um with your my wife and your wife were doing some stuff yeah. and then you were doing some stuff with your wife and yeah. the whole time we were going with this back and forth shit and i was like dog yeah. i don't know why you doing that shit to right. me, they, they, they do it right, right? right. and, and uh, so what made you this time just be like all right i'm gonna do everything you tell me to do just like yeah i think, was I the, think was the what reunion? it was it was just nah nah it wasn't a reunion um it was first of all being fed up uh, with getting minimal results, right? Uh, it's not like I wasn't getting any, but I was just getting minimal results. So I was getting fed up. And then, and then that was seesawing, right? So yeah. get results, fall back, get results, fall back, the whole nine. And so, um, so that was part of it. The other thing too was, you know, a lot of times we, we don't move until we see, mm. you know, until we see That's something, good. until we see the results. So actually, the challenge that you started, um, I, I I tapped in two weeks after, after that. One but week. It was one week. I think. Was it a week? I think it was a week after. Yeah, okay, I, I tapped in like August, like the beginning of August, August third. Yeah. So I'm not yeah. sure exactly when it started, but anyway, I had there was time for me to see cats losing 23 pounds in a week. Cats losing. 17 pounds, young ladies losing, yeah. you know, 15 14, pounds, 15 15, pounds right. so week, like, yeah. wait, so that's, that's not, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm a big modeler, right? I'm like, okay, I'm a, I'm a model success. Right. So right. there was success there. So what's my man name? The, the dude that was running fast back in the day. Uh, John Stoudemire, man. John, John Stoudemire. Shout out John Stoudemire. Shout out John I wanted to run fast like John. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I started, I'm, I'm like, oh man. So if that's working, so then, then, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be like totally transparent about a couple of things. And then it was like, again, it was like, man, I can I can do that. But then you know what? I, I probably gonna be able to modify it. Mm -hmm. Like 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 yeah. B said, I'm getting some thousand island yeah, dressing. Yeah, my man, stuff. shout out to B, man. <laughs> we just went back and forth for right. the, on the thread. But, man. Uh, but so I initially said, oh, I can do it and modify it. But then <laughs> when I didn't modify it and I did it the way you said do it, I'm like, okay, you, this you is not impossible. Yeah. Right. So then that was the second thing. And then the, the, the third thing was, and this is um, uh, uh, just kind of a, a, a vulnerable, honest moment. I, w I would be the person that would get some success and be like, oh, this is the destination. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Almost like if Colorado said, oh, man, we champions. We're good. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no. But so and so this time the mindset was with the affirmation pushing past the success and being like, okay, good. That's good. But let me quickly forget about that. I love it. So that was the, that, those yeah. are the, 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 that's, that's the form of the, the key. The key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The keys. So uh, it's yeah. like, you still got to get right back to, you know, get right back to the grind. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. That's dope. So. That's dope. And after, after the cheat, after the, Oh the, yeah. Um, oh, I got pissed then. Yeah. Cause it was the, yeah, the weekend. I was, I was going to say when I went, um, when I went to the uh, reunion, reunion. Joint, yeah. you were like, man, eat, eat, eat some carbs, man. I eat the carbs. And when I got back home, uh, well, let's see, when did we get back? Sunday. Got back home, um, nah, Monday. Got back home Monday. Got on the scale. I was like, up 10 pounds. Yeah, 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 I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Oh, no. But then I'm, I, I'm I, glad you weighed. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. glad you weighed. Well, that's because a part of it. It was too. a trigger. It, yeah, that was a part yeah, of yeah. it, too, that, right? That accountability, that, that accountability every single day. Right? Yeah. And so I was like, ah, Well, man. that's a big, yeah, that's, uh, so the, the, one of the hardest, one of the biggest hurdles that I had to get people over is their relationship with the scale in the beginning. Yeah. 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 So, you know, once we lock in on that, that's what actually gets you back on the wagon faster yeah. than, than what, than when you, you know what I mean? So then, when you avoid the conversation. So then it was like, okay, I got to get back to the baseline. Right. Yeah. So I got to get back. Get that baseline. 10 off. Yeah. Yeah. I got to get that 10 off. So I'm at, um, so that was Monday. What's today? Wednesday. Yeah. And Did so, you get off yet, or you got nah? I still got a couple one more. more. I got one. Oh, you you there? You there? I got one yeah, more. Yeah, you there? Yeah, so, yeah, you there? But see, I don't feel like I'm there until that, until that one power yeah. go away. So yeah. But just think about it. Now you five weeks ahead. Five, yeah, facts. Because you at your lowest. You one pound away from your lowest, and you just started over again. Right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the the way you can actually um, identify how far you've come in your your journey is how long it actually takes you to get back on the wagon after you fall off. Right. So you literally fell off for one or two days and you got back on the wagon. Right. But Immediate. if you think about how long it actually took you to do this one, you know, you, you realize that, you know, wow, man, you know, it, it was a year or it was right. 18 months or it was six weeks or whatever it was, you know what I mean? Right. That once you, you see how short of um, it is, 
is for you to kind of shake the play off. Yeah. Like in football, basketball, we had a bad play right. and we run it over in our head a million times and we mess up a couple of times down the court because we're thinking about the old play. Yeah. But the the great ones shake it right off and, yeah. you know what I mean, they, they get right back to it. So, you know, Matt, big shout yeah, out I to you. I shook it off, man. I shook it off. Yeah. I was mad, man. I was mad. I was yeah, mad. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I gained, um, real quick, I real quick, uh, uh, I had gained uh, about 12 to 14 pounds in those two days. Wow. Um, so and after being on it for six straight weeks right. and, and getting down like super low and, and weight, I gained like 12, 14 pounds back in those two days. But, you know, I seen I put in a group right. that I lost 10 pounds in one day in one after day. that. Yeah, a lot of water and stuff like that. Right. But but to get back, you know, on the wagon after but those two people, days was... People, people will hear that and won't believe like... That I lost ten pounds in one day. Oh, but you put the you put the yeah. start and the end weight, and it was it was yeah, ten pounds. Absolutely, weight. and the top yeah. of the 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 pictures from your iPhone where it yeah, said yeah. today, the day, and then it said the yeah time. the time yeah. at yeah. today, and then the other the next one, yeah. which was yeah. dope. But let's move on to change lanes, man. So I want to talk know. about man. So you know, I, I'm an introvert with extrovert tendencies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? Me too. And so you believe me? Huh? You believe me? Believe you I can believe that you're an introvert yeah, or extrovert I've, tendencies, I've but, but, but you, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've okay, seen you right, settings cool. where it was like you wanted to shrink. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah, like yeah, you know, literally, you in like loud settings, you shrunk and went to sleep. So yeah, I believe I believe that 100. percent Thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, because people don't be believing me, but um, and so um, you know, I'm at this, I'm at the reunion, and I, I was just kind of observant, like how some people were just like. Like I was excited to see people that I hadn't seen in a long time. Okay, right? so that's a fact. Um, I wanted to talk to people who I hadn't talked to in a long time. Um, some more than others, just because of the relationship I had with them. Mm -hmm. But I just saw how some people just like literally like they just soaked up the energy of every person that they came in contact with. They were just like, and so it, it's important though that you know we were how we were talking about networking, yeah. building relationships. Yeah. That that is that's super super important, but. Um, for me, it takes some time, mm -hmm. right? And especially, in, and we were talking about that political arena, right? I'm, I'm just, I, I, yeah, it's just hard. <laughs> but you, you just flow, you flow with, you know, if it was, you know, a, a city councilman or if it was the president of the United States, you just yeah. flow and you just- Or rappers you know, or, or whomever. Or entertainer, whomever, whoever, yeah. Right, yeah. but I just, I just struggle. So what do you, like, why do you think that is? Because we're both introverts, right? And And I can- I can maneuver in any room. Yeah. It's just that, you know, will I be comfortable or, or will I want to? And when I don't want to, I dip. Um, well, let me ask you a question first is um, how are you in general with like transition, transitioning in anything? Um, give me an example. You mean like? Well, I mean, with anything, like how are you with transitioning from the, uh, oh, just, the company to, oh, to I, I mean, it's, it's necessary, so I just do the necessary. Yeah. Regardless of how I feel, yeah. I just do the necessary. And I guess more more than anything, this conversation is about how I feel, not necessarily can I do it, will I do it, it's just how I feel about it. Right, and, that, and that's why it takes you so long to adjust in that room. Mm. Because it's how you feel about some of these uncomfortable or unfamiliar conversations that you may have to have to network with people. Right. So if, the, the way I approach transition is like, the longer it takes me, the the further behind I'm going to be mm. because of my transitions when I may have been in the street or going from um, going from college to the streets, going from streets to jail, going from jail to home. Mm. And I have to transition is the key to actually winning a game. So if you're playing sports, right. uh, transition defense yeah. is, right. is, is going to be the difference right. between, you know, you getting back in the ball game or, you know, you, you still on the ball and, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so forgetting, forgetting about the bad shot. Right, right. So those, those transitions allow me to adopt and adapt a lot faster so I can either evolve, what my mentality is evolve or face extinction. Gotcha. And if I step in this room. Is that, is that, um, is that a skill? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can definitely. learn that? Yeah, that, absolutely. It's definitely like, learned. Or how much of that is innate? So it's, it's a skill, it's a learned behavior, but once something becomes a skill, and Allen Iverson has done this crossover so many times, yeah. it becomes innate. When somebody steps right up, he has this automatic you don't think about bop, bop, yeah. he don't think about it. So you're still thinking about Right. The uncomfortable part yeah. of being in rooms that yeah. you know Especially you might not know everybody. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Well, they may if they're gonna make you squirm if you already got like like people hate salesmen. 
Yeah. Like they hate politicians. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you get I don't cold. hate them. It's just I'm that. Not, I don't mean hate. You know then, what I mean? And then with the politicians, like most of the time, I don't believe you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everybody got an objective. So, you know, we like mad cats you run into on a regular basis is being political. Like, you know what I mean? They got an agenda. Right. So they coming to get whatever they, whatever, like your yeah, family yeah. come ask you for money. They coming they to, coming to play politics. They got an agenda. They trying to get they the vote across. They were trying to get you to cast a vote for them trying so they can borrow they, some money from you. trying to get their version of a vote. That's it. The vote That's is. it. Every single time. What say you, uh, uh, EA? <laughs> I just want to, uh, I just want to get the, well, I'm, a, I'm an extrovert, so. You know, I can, I'm good. I, I flourish around people. Like I kind of always want to be kind of like in that team setting and stuff yeah. like that. But, but I do recognize when someone is moving over in and they're like, you know, sucking the life out of stuff. And like, yeah. I just tend to kind of like put them into a yeah. corner. Like I try to like, you, you try to get it out of the way really, really early and then kind of push them off to the Not side. me. I yeah. fuck with them. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I just so bag, somebody right? got to redirect the energy. It's like, all right, so it's like we in a barbershop, right? Yeah. And you got that one person, like, we was all joking. We was all, and then this thing could come in all super serious and, you know what I mean? Like, about to mess up the whole energy and mood and the joint. But then you got that one person be like, eh, man, nobody wearing that shit, man. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> right. And everybody busts out laughing right. and then neutralize that shit. Right. So sometimes I'll be like, if I don't see nobody else doing it, then I'll be that person that kind of neutralizes neutralizes right. the energy and shit. Yeah, and that's, that's your crossover. You just automatically do that, though. It's like, I got to think about it. I got to think, okay, what's my next play? Like, how am I going to get out of this room? Yeah. Uh, please don't come over here and talk to me. Uh, you know, so and, you unless think- I feel like, unless, unless I'm put in a, a, a defensive posture, like if I'm in a room with a politician and I know the stuff that he's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes, that you don't mess oh, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah nah. So, so let me. So, so when we did the 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 breakfast at Jake's with uh, yeah. Mark Walker because he's running yeah. for governor. Yeah. Um. So I know you know you 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 showed up you know on my behalf you know yeah. I mean all that different type of stuff yeah. and you don't really do the politics and stuff like that. Right. But um, uh, uh, did um. Odell do that for us, like take the elephant out of the room uh, with his, um, you know, kind of remarks the way, he, you know, just was like, you know, the white boy. And I know y'all wondering about how they, blah, 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 you know what I mean? Did that or did that make things worse? It. Um, what did you think about that? <laughs> so what I what I thought about that was. Yeah. Uh, so politicians, I believe. They have. They got a blueprint. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to say certain things mm-hmm. and they have to say certain things certain ways. Mm-hmm. And I, when I hear that cookie cutter rhetoric, then I'm like, mm, here we go again. Right. Mm-hmm. You ain't really said nothing different than the other guy. Right. Uh, what I'm looking for is like, like, for example, they were they were uh, he was talking specifically about things that he wanted to do for the underserved community. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the things that he was going to do for the underserved community, they would keep the community underserved. It would just make it more comfortable for the underserved community. You're not talking about doing things to uh, eradicate you know, poverty or to lift them from you know, that community. You're still talking about things that will just make them more comfortable in that community. Right. And so um, that's when I that's when I tune out. And, you know, and so I'm looking for like if you talk about but then, you know, like he connected the things that he was talking about with change. Mm-hmm. Again, you're going to make it more comfortable for the person in that underserved community. Yeah, so, I find it hard to believe that you didn't you didn't challenge him. And I didn't I didn't get a chance because okay. it was like, you know, people were asking questions again about the things that he was going to do or he wanted to do but again it was the thing I that, asked him to ask questions I went over and said hey, I didn't get a chance you get yeah, a, yeah, I didn't get a chance I, 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 the, I, we could have literally called on who we wanted to call on so I said yo uh, listen nah, man and, if you do me a favor and, 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 yeah, I had my hand up, I had my hand up for about 30 you minutes you probably had it like this big dog they, 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 they just they, but so yeah, that's, that's when I just, I just I just tune out when you ain't talking about like making making some real change and not, and not getting off of your script right get off your script and let's talk about some real change. So yeah, yeah, that's when I get stuck. So I mean, I think that um, I think sometimes when your your guard is up, um, you might not be able to see what is, you know, what can be done because uh, there's um, change got to start somewhere, and ain't nobody coming in and just about to 
just take everybody out of poverty, you know what I mean, just like that. So it's going to be small steps with, um, you know, I, I actually said it in the quotes and no, stuff. I put it nah, in the day. Nah, like we we, tiny we took the Ukraine out of poverty. We're in the process of taking Ukraine out of poverty with billions of dollars being dumped into the Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. But we're not dumping millions into the underserved communities. Right. We're dumping thousands into, you know, a freaking turkey. Well, I mean, some people have the power to do that. Some people don't. So if you get up there and you start talking about you actually can do that, then you're going to be exposed as a fraud by the time it's vote time anyway, because you ain't going to be able to do it. Nah, I mean, politicians lie all the time. Yeah. They, they, they give you, they paint one picture, but you don't, you don't ever see that picture. Most yeah. politicians do that. Then what? Well, nobody I mean, holds if you're looking for a politician to actually tell you that they about to save everybody out of poverty, then you might as well just never even vote at all. No, I'm not saying not to get everybody out of poverty, but I'm saying to do things like if, if it's if you do 10 things, two out of 10, make sure there are things that are significant. That's all I'm saying. I don't, I don't see significant changes being made by politicians. So then one would say, hey, well, go be a politician. I'm not a good politician. Yeah. You know, me personally. So, so we got a whole bill called the Prisoner Prosperity Act. And right. in this bill, they actually um, uh, proposing that uh, we, not just inmates, but let's just say the, the one part of it is for um, uh, justice impacted individuals so that they could actually get apprenticeships while they're in jail yeah. and come home to gainful employment because they already right. have, you know, the work experience, um, you know, from the trade or the service that they choose to go into. Right. right? And that's unprecedented type stuff. Um, that is like real change. Right. And for somebody to do that, um, as opposed to just uh, somebody because he's black or has the same um, uh, affiliate, uh, whatever you call that, is, is like, I don't, have to, I don't have to fuck with you just because you're a Democrat and right. you ain't never came up with an idea like this uh, either. So like I mess with people who get things done. Um, it, you know, I'm not sure who you know or how much you've actually, you know, worked the room to where a motherfucker can help you get some shit done. But um, those are the people that I rock with. Yeah. So I actually rock with you because you come in and you say, hey, man, um, how can we help? You know, you've helped in this manner right here. And then how can, you know, we turn around and help you? And then my motto is one hand wash the other and they both wash the face. So anybody that's coming in and just poaching and leeching and grabbing and, and taking, um, you know, we about to go to war anyway. Right. So I only mess with people that are actually contributing and adding value to the community. So right. if they're not adding value, then I'm not fucking with them. You know what I mean? And then everybody else has to actually see, you know, the value in some, some type of way. Because right. I'm not going to just bring anybody to the table. Like, all right, so they had this, um, everybody mad at the, uh, uh, um, uh, some people mad at the EYL people because some of the guests that came on now are, you know, they being exposed as frauds and things like that. And we have to be able to see who's adding value to the community and to what extent before we bring somebody around. So people are vetted to a certain extent. And with me, they're vetted with heavy scrutiny because you, you know, I, I've been around the block a couple of times, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want nobody that I know that's heavy in whatever game to have a conversation or be pointing the finger back at me six months later and say, you know, uh, such and such, you, that was your man. Right. You, you brought such you and such that, around right. here. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I do that shit at the gym a lot. You know what I mean? Like if, if I kick somebody out of the gym, right. it'd be like, uh, I got to trace them back to a lineage. Mm. So it's like, um, so, so everybody so, got to go. The whole lineage got to go. No, no, no. But I, I find out who's responsible. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that person, uh, we have a conversation with that person. Right back to, uh, I thought it was Clubhouse for a second. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to dra dra drag it back to, uh, drag it back to the. To how it happens in Clubhouse? Tell me, how, how, how did we happen in Clubhouse? Well, now it's when you um, basically when it first started, like you had to do it by invite, and then they would let you know who invited each person. And then basically we've seen a couple of times where they tracked it back and it was like, yo, you're supposed to be responsible for this person. Wow. And then I actually yeah. heard, I heard of some people actually get kicked out of clubhouse. Like oh, in the early, yeah. in the early. Yeah, you, like that? Out. you like that? Yeah. I'll be it ain't, it ain't that out, man. Go. Now I don't, I don't kick the original person out, but. But it, it ain't their fault that somebody started wilding? No, nah, it ain't, but it's their fault they came around. Dang. They brought them. They Is that like a right. code? Is that like a street code or something? Yeah, it's you done code. They bought them. Yeah, yeah. The it's a, so who, look. This, the, the street code is, is called, is this your man's? 
Is, is that's it? Is <laughs> this your, your man? man? Your man? This, it, who it, man's is that? So you, like, you, yeah. you, you're the you're the person that don't like people because your man don't like people. Nah, I'm the person you don't that, with them don't, that I, like you. That cat. If if you co-sign for this dude that beat me, then you gonna either pay what he owe or you gotta go too. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. That's just the code. All the right. code. Got you. So when we talk about change, man, I'm I'm talking about like I'm talking about the Deion Sanders kind of change. Okay. All right. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's talk like that's, that's that's look. I, I I love what the University of Colorado is doing, um, and I also almost like the fact that JSU mm-hmm. isn't as successful as they are. So that's a little petty, right? Yeah. Because um, Dion wasn't getting the credit for what he was going to do at at uh, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And on the way out, it was almost like we we're going to be good without you. Yeah. And so he was he was he was being doubted leaving and he was being doubted coming. So it was like, you know, he he really was caught between the rock and the hard place, but he's proven like both situations totally wrong yeah and i just love uh, what i love more than anything is just the whole psychology of the process right by starting off by telling out the gate if you were here as a player um go ahead and hit the portal because you ain't gonna be here basically uh, i'm staring at a one in you know one in ten whatever they only won that one game last yeah. season so surely i ain't rocking with y'all because surely y'all only won one game nah y'all gotta leave and then from there hit the transfer portal unconventionally recruited unconventionally and has 87 players of which i think it's six or ten that are still there from the original team that's unheard of and then just shocked the world recently by beating a top 25 rated mm. university that tough. eight months ago was playing for the national, national championship. championship. Yeah, that's tough. That's and tough. so, and then, you know, you look at his players, man, they will run through a brick wall for that dude. Yeah. And that's all, I believe, the, the psychological impact. No, no, granted, they're very, very talented. But pulling the absolute best out of them, I think he's a master at that. Yeah. I mean, I think anybody that has um, a, a decent um, amount of influence over a certain group of people yeah. could could bring the best out of people. So you believe it's influence? I, I mean, anything? prime is, a, first of all, you prime. Like, niggas had prime sneakers, man. People wanted to be like Dion. Dion, both sides of the ball. He had two sports. He first one mm. only one hit a home run and a, a touchdown in the same, same week or something like that. Like right. you know what I mean? Like on a, on the NFL and professional major league baseball level. Right. Like gold yeah, jacket. Prom, like Hall yeah. So so it's prime, man. Like right. these influence decades of of people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like he's been on reality TV shows, he's been a preacher, he's been right. everything. So he's his influence is super strong. The, like, you um, know what I mean? Did you hear um he, he was talking about Dylan Edwards, the oh, kid that dude, got he he had like three touchdowns. And so but when he got Dylan Edwards, five star recruit when he got him, everybody's like, how in the world did he get Dylan Edwards? And then recently he just shared that he was coaching Dylan Edwards when he was six years old. Mm-hmm. He said, that's how I got him, the yeah. relationship. When when he was coaching six-year-olds, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, now yeah. he's making $5 million a year on the level that he was on, but he was coaching six-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't want to do the six-year-old coaching. They just want to do the, you know, power five coaching, right? right? They don't want to, they don't want to go through the ranks yeah. to become the power five coach. They want to do the, and I'm not, and, and, and that's just a metaphor for whatever it is you, you yeah. do, that you're working on. Well, I mean, my whole beef was, is, and, um, you know, I'm happy for the success that he's having right now. But my whole beef was if God called you to save the HBCUs, then after three years, I'm sure you didn't do everything that God had told you to do when he whispered. How, you, how you are you sure of that? How can you say you, you just yeah. use the word you're sure that he didn't do everything that God called him? How are you because sure it, that? Because the fuck is you talking about? How are you sure that he didn't do that in three years? How no. are you sure the assign- he didn't carry out his assignment? The shit ain't changed. He stood up there on the stage. I didn't. 
I didn't stand up there on the stage and say that God told me that or, or called me to save the HBCU. How many HBCUs are, are on TV now? How many HBCUs um, Bro, get the exposure? How many people? Shit. How many oh, people are? Bugging. How many? How many God, kids are now going to HBCUs versus going to the Power Five? Bro, he didn't do nothing to that sense of whatever the fuck you don't. So you, he didn't now. impact. He didn't Hell, HBCUs. No. Period. No, that's oh, not man, what I said. He didn't save them, bro. You, do you think a person can save them? He's, first of you all, you think a person I, can save a whole institution? Not me, bro. Him and God had that conversation. I right. went in it. I was a fucking body. But I'm saying, standard. do you think body a person talk? can do that, bro? You now you're grilling me. You need to ask. No, him. I'm not. I'm, 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 God, I'm grilling listen, you about what you said. Him and God had a conversation. He stood on a press conference and said it. I didn't. Right. So he obviously thinks that God said he could actually do it. Do what? Could save the HBCUs and change the stuff. I, I, I got. We got to fact check that EA. I don't believe he ever said. Okay. He was going to save HBCUs. Cool. I'm going to tell you what he said and dig, dig, pull it up. I will. Pull it up. Yeah, give me a second. Uh, so, quick question about since we're on the, the course of Dion. So, I, I was having a conversation with some family over the weekend, and the conversation came up about was. Uh, Charisma, like a form of genius or like a form of intelligence. Like, if someone is charismatic and can basically influence someone, is that a form of intelligence? Oh, I, think it's a skill. I think it's a skill. It's a characteristic. It's something that you, you, you kind of grow into, you learn, especially with uh, whatever um, service or product that you're in. It's, it's a form of sales. Uh, you're selling yourself and you're selling what you're doing and uh, we we all do it and and it's, it's cool but you know at the same time uh, he you know he didn't um, to me uh, you know I I wasn't as cool with everybody with the the jump and the move and yeah, all that other type of stuff yeah, yeah, yeah I wasn't cool with you, all that you were ready to crucify him you were ready to crucify Dion. Yeah, he, I mean, he she's still, look he, look, he made his decision. He did what he had to do. And I want to see him successful because he's a black man. Right. But at the end of the day, I like and I love when people build something for us that can literally change the fucking game. Gotcha. And I just thought that. I think he changed the game without a doubt. I mean, look at the power. Look at his team. Most of those kids wouldn't be. Wouldn't be on that level, possibly. He got HBCU kids playing at Colorado. That's not the what I'm quarterback. Talking. I'm talking about JSU. Like, what, You're what still about? talking about Colorado? JSU is on the map. That, all right, like never before. You, you're right, big dog. You're I, right. It's not. I'm, I'm not trying to be right. I'm just saying they are on the map. You're right. And they, the were they, you were said, they were They were practicing. You said at the dude. beginning, you said uh, the part of you is happy that they're not as successful without him. As not, they're not as successful without him because the people that he recruited are now no longer in that HBCU blue and red and white. They're over there with black and gold and white on now. So that took a lot of stock out of that program. I, I, I and want them. I want another program. Listen, I want and JSU. And that's fine for all of those people that chose that. But I think you're missing a point. Though. I'm not missing a point. You're missing this point because you want that point to be made. I think that point is made already. What point? The point that the, the Colorado team is doing good, that he brought those people over there and he, he, won, his, he won the game. No, no, I'm, I'm making a point against the thing that you said, that he didn't make a difference. That's with, not what I said. He said he was going to save the game yeah, he's, and save the HBCUs. No, no individual can save cool. historically yeah. black colleges and universities then sports he programs. he jumped out there and said it. I don't know that he said it. I know you, we're fact checking. You're absolutely anyway. right. But anyway, you're, anyway. you're right. Your phone anyway, is right there. Anyway. You can look it up. No, nah, I'm, 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 nah, I'm good. It, it, it doesn't. Does it matter? I don't know. Anywho, it absolutely matters Anywho. because one day when you actually see it, you're gonna be like, "Damn, I can't believe I sat up there on the joint. They got it on camera. I'm on wax saying that he didn't say it, and it's actually there." I mean, and I could be wrong about that, but the reality is, no one person, no one individual can save an institution like historically black colleges and universities athletics. That's all I'm saying. Good. And, and, and I think the point that's, that's, that's being proven now is that um, a kid that played for an HBCU last year um, who, who won an HBCU um, um, title and who played for another title um, threw for 500 yards in a power for our school. 
and surgically just just ripped up that defense. That's, that's all that, that that's all I'm saying is that like, these kids, like kids in America, they can go anywhere, they can play anywhere. If you're good, if you're trying to get to the next level, you can be found. That's all I'm saying. Now I'm saying the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. That that kid could have been still at Jackson State, yeah. right? Yeah. And been found and go to the NFL, just like Shannon Sharp, just like all the, the Walter Paytons, right. just like all of the people that are that we know that have green jackets now. Is it right. jacket green? Gold. Is it blue? Gold. Gold jackets. Right. Gold jackets, mm -hmm. and th they're in the Hall of Fame, and they came from HBCU. Right. All I'm saying is I would love to see the day that we go back to – bringing our people right here in the state, staying at A&T, staying at such and such, all the ones that run off to go to the Power Fives so that we can say that um, we over here at the white schools dominating at the white schools and shit right. like that. Got it. All right. All right. So you, you touched on, um, you touched on um, the EYL people and the scams. Why do you think, why do you think? Well, they weren't scamming. No, not them, right. But the people they were associated with were scamming. You don't, you don't think they had any idea that the people they were associated with were scamming? Um, yeah, so I, I didn't, sketch. um. Is your phone an etching sketch? Why are you shaking your phone like that? Because if you, um, if you uh, shake your phone, it'll um, undo, type in, or redo something. Oh, and right. cancel, yeah. yeah so if you hit right. a button by accident. Well, y'all listen, y'all like getting, y'all getting everything on this podcast. Who knew? <laughs> I swear I ain't know hey, that. Hey, yo. Mine is not doing this. <laughs> I'm going to show you this clip later. Go to what's name? Looks wild. Go to, uh, go to uh, your notes. Type yeah. something in real quick. Yeah. And then shake it. Go to notes. And it'll disappear? It's, it's going to ask you what you want to do to it. Okay, Google Moogle. I you want notes? It. Yeah. Type in a bunch of S's or something. Shake it. Now it's going to ask you what to say. Undo typing. There you go. Or cancel. There you go. <laughs> now, if you do something by accident, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. Damn, you know, yeah, I, man, you made me lose I my train of it. thought. I, I made me lose it. my train of thought with you shaking your head like that. You said EYL in the scan. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, you don't think they knew? Like, like nah. we knew, right? Some of us knew. Nah, we just, uh, it's, I don't Dude, rock with nobody. So That's not true. That, whatever. That's not true. Anyway, but we're going to let you have that. You don't think they had an idea? No, uh, they didn't uh, have an idea. Fucking Max did one of their podcasts uh, with uh, one of them dudes' podcasts uh, that they put out on the Western name. Max not a scammer. Uh, that, and they, you he, said they're not I'm scammers. Saying, Max not a scammer. That's but what some saying, of the people that, he, they had on there, come on, man, they were giving wrong information. They were giving too good to be true information. But here's what I'm saying is... The, you think if Max knew dude was scamming that he would have did his podcast? No, he wouldn't have did it. You talking about Sometimes EYL? You don't know. No, the other fucking dude, the, the Spanish dude that um I don't that know what you're uh, talking about. that's the one of the main ones. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, the what dude that rock with Envy, NJ or something. The dude that rock with it, with Envy. Yeah, the dude oh, okay. that rock with Envy. All right. Well, Max didn't know. Do you think they knew though? They spent a lot what more I'm time. Saying. They spent a lot of time with these cats. Bro, they're in the right. same industry. First of all. Max is in an industry with the dude that that was doing the what's the name. If right. anybody I'm knows, is that was people that are in the industry. That was a one time. That's event. not what that I'm was, saying. So but what I'm saying is when we listen to some of these much cats, time that e EYL spend with uh, because they got some of those cats are were on every week. Or on every month. Oh, I've never seen the guy flipping in Jay on there that much. Or I've on quite a bit. Okay. I, or they I, said they did well, deals I was with him. Talk about that guy. But come on, man. Anyway, anyway, I, I I just had a problem with that fact. So what do you? Why do you think? But here's the, here's the, here's a bigger question. Why do you think? Because the majority of the people that they scam look like them. Yeah, I mean that's that's their demographic. They didn't just start like uh, it's like black on black crime. Ah, it's, it's just like around black I, people so, kill black people because they're around. If I got work right, yeah, and you introduce me and shit like that, you don't never know when I'm a mess up or when I'm a turn bad or right. when I'm a fuck up. Now, right. whoever I'm serving now, whoever right. I actually sell to and do what I do, like they going to wind up getting beat. These the ones that I'm going to wind up getting dirt on. So I got trainers. I got coaches that we have a no zero tolerance policy where you mess with other women and stuff right. like that. And you might have brought me one of the trainers. Right. You don't know when that guy's going to have a vulnerable moment and start sleeping with a girl or something like that. And she might be married and thing. And now all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, okay. yo, you all do. Right, right. You knew that I'm giving you that. No, 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 I'm giving you that. I'm giving you that. I'm just saying, shit. why do, why do, these scammers end up scamming people that look like 
them. Because that's like, the people that they deal with. You don't just go out and just say, if I'm dealing with so you, I have is a there, built-in is there customer any base. responsibility on the community the, of the people that look like them? That's why I kick niggas out. All right. Because, I mean, some of the things, it, it's just, so one of the things that we're about on this podcast is shrinking that knowledge gap, right? It seems like a lot of the scammers take advantage of the knowledge gap and will say just about anything and people are like, oh man, yeah, I'm gonna sign up for that. Yeah, let, let, let me get some of that. Because you look like me, <coughs> you sound like you know what you're talking about, so I'm gonna sign up for that. Yeah. And then it happens over and over and over again. That's the part I don't get. Yeah, so I, it's, it's, so we don't know the depths of people's scams. We don't know how deep they scam actually goes, but there's a lot of people that are, they have courses, they have, you know, all these different things that people are paying for and stuff like that. And we might not agree with a lot of information or we might have more information than they have. Right. So it doesn't mean that it's, it's actually a scam. It, it just simply means that they might not know as much as you know, and they're actually charging somebody for it and getting money. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to say that I think a, a part of it is the, is the knowledge gap in the sense of like, they, uh, some people can't validate the information that they've been given. Right. Right. And this is, they're being told that. Y'all this believe that? I, I mean, I don't think, I don't think the average person knows how to like truly research and vet something out. What? I, that's just my that's just my thought process. He said the average person. He's not talking about the actual person who's giving the the lecture or the, the yeah, teachings. The average right. person can can give you model numbers on Louis Vuitton rare purses because they dug deep and went and found that information. You you believe that? You believe that the average person can't validate information given to them? Yeah, I believe that. Or or they don't want to. Both. I think it, or they don't want to take the time. I would, probably, I would probably say it's a little bit of both because my thing it's is like because my thing is there's there's certain things that right like let's say well Lynch right like Lynch has a well fitness and stuff like that like he could tell me this is what you need to do to lose weight yeah. right you rock with right it. and my thing is like I'm gonna take his word for it yeah. right because whenever because I learned this in, in in school right it's like when you have your doctor that you go to like your 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 yeah. like you don't ask them. Where did they graduate in their class? Yeah, you care right? less. You just like, yo, you got right. that degree. You they have do instant credibility. You, Doctors you, and right? accounts have instant credibility. You do what you're supposed to do, so I'm going to believe lawyers. you, right? So unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there who are influenced, right? And they're being told that this person knows what they're talking about, right? right? But what tends to happen is that no one asks for proof, right? And I think a big portion of it is that it's not that they're telling them anything that they want. I think it's just like they're not explaining what the risks are. Right, so it's it's coming out like seems to be more of like a buyer's remorse versus like you scammed me. What? Yeah, I understand. We're talking saying. about the people that have gotten scammed. Out I mean, of my, my like my thing is like there's thousands people, there's, of dollars. I mean, my thing is like so from what I've heard about the whole flipping NJ situation, right? Is that yeah. you know he had a fund, right, and that people were putting into the fund. And then they was expecting returns at a certain time, right? But some people look at it as like that's a guarantee, because it's worked for this person or whatever the case may be. Like, right, like right. people, it's like the same way you can sue anybody. Anyone will say something's a scam, right? But my thing is, if there's risk involved, right, and you bet something that you're not really willing to lose, right? Like you can't just sit there and call it a scam. I'm yeah. not sitting here and validating no. anything that he did. I don't no. know the full if, thing. If, if I'm just saying, like, that's, bro, if everyone. Everyone that invested in Jay Morrison's deal lost money and he was the only one that made money and nothing happened that he said was going to happen. It's a scam. He, he bears a lot of responsibility, but the people that gave him money also bears responsibility. So I'm not saying that, you know, the responsibility is one sided, but it's all about intention. Everything is about intention. Right. What was his intention? His intention yeah. was to get money out of people um, and not give them an equivalent value. Period. Point blank. Well, I think maybe maybe just, thought it was going to work. I just feel like as a capitalist that I feel like that I think you are. Yeah. I just find 100%. that. I find that like 
in what other scenarios, like if you honestly gave your honest effort and you did what you had to do, like if you made like I don't see a lot of people like in any other scenario where like, hey, we just you know I'm just gonna give you as much money as I possibly can back. Like I've never seen that before. No, I mean no, it, no, yeah, you have, yeah, you have. There there are plenty of situations like that where investors, which these people were investors. Um, Expected some when you invest money, you expect some sort of return, right. right? Can you lose money? Absolutely. Can you lose all your money? Absolutely. But when everyone's money goes to zero, there's a problem. There's a problem, especially when um, everything wasn't communicated, and he stopped answering the phones, and he hid, and he didn't do anything he said he was going to do. Damn. So. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, yeah, that's some nasty work right there. I don't know what other, you know, characteristics you need to to decide if something is a scam. But all of those things fell into play. Yeah, that's that's a scam right there. <laughs> <laughs> How's business, Lynch? Oh, man, things are uh, picking up a little bit, man. There's a little rough spot for a minute, but um, put in a couple new programs and uh, everything is. Back on the upside. Everything's again, back on the yeah, upside. Yeah, back on the upside right now. Yeah. One, do one do, do you like appreciate that. the rough spots? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I um, got a little tight for a second, but, uh, you know, I got to put my back against the wall, man, get down and dirty, fight the round 30. So I still got a little fight left in me. Yeah, you've been in yeah, 30 round four. fights? That's hey, tough. Man, yeah, I've been, I've been, <laughs> That's tough. Fight. I've been fighting all my life. So shit, you know, still fighting. Right. I guess right. I ain't going, you know, it's going to be right. a fight. Yeah, I tell people I'm, 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 I'm winning or I'm learning. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Not losing, but I'm, I'm Love learning. It. So, uh, definitely, you know, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to trucking, man, I just, it's, it's just so much I have zero control of. And so I got, I'm, I'm learning to, um, maintain, um, my emotions, yeah, um, yeah. because I can't get emotional because then I'll make, I'll make poor decisions. So that's, that's been the toughest thing for me because there's just so much stuff you can't control. I can't control fuel prices. I can't control, you know, freight rates. Um, yeah, they're the ones out there scamming. Uh, ooh. <laughs> ooh. No, that, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a whole nother yeah, pod. Yeah, that, that, industry is a, that industry does, oh, you know, does do, has um, a, hint of, a hint of scam. I got to do uh, Freight Fest again. Oh, I gotta do, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, cool. yeah. It's, uh, when is it, October? Uh, nah, it's the 20. 8th, 29th, or 30th. Okay. Oh. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, so I, gotta, oh. I dabbled a little bit into the, on, to the consumer side of, of trucking, and yeah, it, it feel kind of scammish, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feel kind of yes, scammish. Sir. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it, you know, one of the things that we're working on, man, is because um, every, you, you know, when, whenever there's an enterprise, um, except government, um, on every level, there is accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at every stop, right? So, in trucking, in transportation, there's there's not accountability at every stop. The only person that has accountability is the carrier, right? There's no accountability for the shipper. There's no accountability for the receiver. There's no accountability for the broker, mm. right? It's just the carrier. Damn. So the broker could say anything and do anything, and there's nobody to come lock them up. The, the, the shipper can say, yeah, be here at 8 o'clock, but don't load the truck till 1 o'clock. Mm. Right. And you, you can't nobody's going to find the shipper. Nobody's going to lock them up. Nobody's going to penalize them. Yeah. The receiver says, OK, you need to be here by 10 o'clock. You get there at 10. They don't unload you until 1 a.m. You know, and then there's no accountability. So you got to deal and juggle all those variables. And so we're working on figuring out ways to make sure that um, the different steps are being held. I'm accountable. sure you'll come up with some software. Yeah. Or something. Well, we got we got a little something, something. <laughs> that was something, something that we, we're working yeah. on that that will we, you know a lot of times things will change if there's exposure you shine light on certain things yeah. and so we, we we got some things we're working on to shine light on that fact that there's not accountability you know up the food chain yeah. so yeah, yeah that's yeah. dope yeah yeah so that's about it man you ready to get out of here man hey man shoot. hey I'm, I feel good I'm Lynch, I feel good you feel great Feel good, yeah. You you, you gone for real. <laughs> I feel good. I'm in shot, right? Yeah, I'm in shot. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't wait, I'm dude. Out. Yeah. Like I come, I come and switch the camera. He was just like, I don't I know, know, right? We call that. No, but, but listen, fast, man. This is the End Game Podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in, man. If you got this far, please subscribe. 
please push the bell and the, the dings and the likes and the everything uh, wherever you get your podcast uh, definitely on YouTube man the only thing we ask you to pay is to pay attention man I'm Rod Brown yeah I'm Lynch Hunt and go ahead and share man let everybody know we Tell back it. we on and popping yes. man just let them know like yo remember them cats we missed them and let them know yo we back yeah so shout, share out, for me. shout out shout out Max and May over in shout Dubai out Max. And, shout um, out to yo. May you already know absolutely and we'll talk to you guys next time peace, peace.